Hello everyone. I wanted to make a comparison video between the Planet Ocean 2500 and the Planet Ocean 8900. On the left there I have the Planet Ocean 2500. This model first appeared in 2005 as the first Planet Ocean. Um, at the time there was uh, two sizes to pick from for the standard three hand model which is the 42 millimeter version and the 45 millimeter version. The version before you is the 42 millimeter version and this is the one with the white numbers and black bezel. So let's take a look at that a little closer. So as you can see here, the dial is a matte black dial with um, applied indices and painted numbers. The bezel is aluminum with um, which is painted black and you can see there and we'll flip it around to the back the case back here is steel engraved and you can see the Seamaster logo the Planet Ocean writing there is etched on and the clasp here is a nice solid clasp everything's been etched on the, the writing here Omega Seamaster Professional Planet Ocean. The release is these two buttons here. It's really nice. Has a nice um, click to it when you lock it in. Um, has a nice dive extension on this side here. There we go. Sorry. And locks it nicely. That's how it looks on that angle. Bezel is 120 clicks. There's really no give there. It feels very solid. And that's it. So just for the sizing of this guy, the lug to lug here for the bracelet or strap is 20 millimeters. The overall length between here and here is 47.98 millimeters. The total thickness of the case is 14.2 millimeters. Um, the bezel diameter from here to here is 40 millimeters. So despite this being a 42 millimeter, well advertised as 42 millimeter, is actually a 40 millimeter bezel. Um, the dial between here and here that measures to be 30.48 millimeters. Um, so that's how this guy is here. The links here, um, you see that the ends here are polished when the end on the other side, the bracelet here, these are brushed. So you get that nice contrast and that pretty much goes for the case too. You have lots of areas where it's brushed and over here it's polished so it has, it just gives it more dimension. The bracelet here is put on using the pin and sleeve system so you can see that clearly there. And that is kind of it for the 2500. And let's kind of clean them off and give you another view of it. Okay, and that can go down. And here is the Planet Ocean 8900. So the 8900 model came out in 2016. Um, in this particular generation, Planet Oceans come in two sizes for the three-handers. That's 39 and a half and 43 and a half. So let's take a browse around. So as you can see, the big difference between the two is this one here. Uh, the bezel and the dial are entirely made of ceramic, so it's very lustrous. Um, some other no differences that you can see here are the the numbers. Those are applied. And so they have like the 3D look to them. Um, let's see what else. The indices, like the other one, are also applied indices. But these ones, I think the, um, the bordering, if you could kind of see there, the indices, um, they are much more shiny. But in general, this is a much more shiny watch. The other one is more of a classic look. Um, let's take a look at the bracelet here. The bracelet here, you can see that. Um, on both sides, on this side here and on the ends here, it's both brushed. The bracelets utilize screws and pins. 
So this is kind of like the newer Omega bracelets. Um, these are a lot easier to change. You just need a screwdriver. Um, the case, just like the other one here, you're going to have a mixture between brushed and polished steel. Again, adding to more dimension, and it looks much nicer. So the clasp, this is one of the big differences between the two models, the clasp. This is a much beefier clasp. Um, like the same, it opens and closes kind of the same, just push these buttons here. Um, again, this is solid. The logo is etched on, it has a lot less writing there. Let's look at the dive extension. So just give this guy a little push out. And dive extension, just like the other one, not too many differences here. But the main difference between the two bracelets is this one here has a micro adjustment uh, button here which allows you to change the, to make very small increments on the bracelet um, just pretty much throughout your day. You don't need any tools or anything, all you have to do is just push this button and it increases the bracelet um, length. And just push it to decrease it and yeah, I find that this is actually a very nifty feature. Uh, these came out in the last couple years, I think. But uh, I'm kind of surprised it took them so long to get these out. But this makes a huge difference when wearing bracelets, especially where I live, where temperatures change quite a bit. Um, apart from that, bracelets very solid. The bracelets are actually quite a bit thicker than the old ones, and I'll show you a comparison in a bit. Uh, let's look at the logo in the back here. So this one here, it doesn't have the, you no longer have the engraved steel. You have a um, uh, sapphire crystal case back. And you can see the new 8900 movement. It has this pie crust um, etching on the edge there. And that is kind of that. And let's take a look at both of them now. Oh, actually, before I put this one down, let's talk about the sizing. So this one here is the 43.5 millimeter version. Um, the thickness, this is probably the biggest thing for most people, the thickness weight is 16.04 millimeters. So it is two, uh, one point, I think 1.8 millimeters thicker than the 2500. The lug to lug here is 21 millimeters. So it's going to be an, uh, a little more, bit more of a, a special size. 21 millimeter straps are kind of hard to come by. Well, not hard to come by, they're just hard to come by versus the 20 millimeter ones. So just something to be aware of. Um, the overall length here between the bezel here and the bezel here, that is 42 millimeters. So it is pretty, it's, it's like the other one, it's uh, a lot smaller than they actually say it is. Um, the diameter here for the dial, so between here and here, this is 31.86, so that's roughly one millimeter larger than the 2500. And I think that is it. And I guess we can show you the loom in a second here when I compare them both. So now I'll pick up both models and you can see them side by side. The one on the right, which is 8900, this one is going to be slightly bigger. Um, the bezel diameter here is two millimeters larger and the dial itself is one millimeter larger. And the main difference I think for a lot of people is when you look at the thicknesses, this is 1.8 millimeter thicker on the 8900 than on the 2500 and you can kind of see it. The 8900 generally is a much bigger watch. Um, you can see the bracelet comparison, the thickness of the each bracelet here and you can see the difference in the pins versus the screws. And let's see how much they weigh. So both watches has been uh, sized to a seven and a half inch wrist. So let's try the 8900. So 8900, this guy weighs 207 grams. And the 2500 here, this guy weighs 184 grams. So you're getting quite a bit of weight when you're picking up one of the newer models. Um, some things that people probably don't notice too much about the two models is you can see on the 2500 on the left, this end case here, the link on the, for the, the case, it actually has a male connection. So it, um, 
the overall length is actually increased by a, a few millimeters. But on the 8900 here, it has a female end link. So this actually fits better because it wraps around your wrist better with a, lower, uh, a smaller overall diameter. Uh, some other differences is the date set. So on the 2500 here, which has a screw down crown, it just pretty much utilizes the standard date. So you pull out the, pin, uh, the crown here and you can oops, you can change the date forward, backwards, and in the second position here you can change the actual date and you can move it forward. I'm probably not in the right position. There you go, and 19, 20. So that's how those ones, that's generally the, uh, the traditional way that I think most movements change the date and time. But then you have the 8900, which uses the quick hour set. So to show you that, you just, again, undo the screw down crown. You pull it out. And then you're actually adjusting the hours only. So in order to get the next day, you just go forward, 19, and 20. So it's good for people that are traveling between time zones. And then if you pull it out one more, you could control the minute hand. So just like any center watch really. Um, but yeah, so that is really interesting. So some people like it. I actually, I, yeah, I think it's pretty good, especially if you're traveling. So you could always adjust hours pretty easily. And let's talk about the two movements. So the 2500 movement uses the ETA 2892 movement with a modification to add the Omega Quaxo escapement. So at the end of the day, this is an ETA movement with some modifications and it's been polished and I guess uh, decorated by Omega. Um, they call it the 2500 movement. Um, this model here generally has, I guess you would say that it has four different movements you can get, the 2500A, B, C, and D. The 2500C is the most common one, and at the end of the production of this generation, you'll find the 2500D. The 2500D has, like a, I believe, a three-tier Quaxo compared to the two-tier Quaxo on the 2500C movements. So what they say is it adds a little more stability to the movement, um, but in terms of timekeeping, I think they're all relatively the same. These keep extremely good time. Uh, I think this one, it's quite old now, it's around uh, 2012 version it has a 2500D, 2500D, sorry, and it's about four seconds ahead day, so that's pretty good. And then we have the 8900, which is um, pretty much 10 years of uh, mechanical watch advancement by Omega. So you're going to have lots of different things. So this one actually has a tighter tolerances in terms of accuracy. Um, it's comp pretty much for day-to-day -day use. You could say it's pretty much completely anti-magnetic. Um, they say it's good to 1500 gauss. This one, of course, the movement's thicker. It uses a double barrel, so um, you're going to have pretty much um, a more consistent torque throughout your power reserve. It also has, let's see here, silicon balance spring, which again, that adds to the anti-magnetic properties of this guy. It also adds to just better timekeeping, just because uh, the silicon balance spring will deliver more consistent um, pulsations versus uh, the former one. I'm thinking that's some kind of metal. Um, again, the ceramic here is one of the new things they added. Um, both of them have the helium escape valve here, which you probably know much about that already. I don't need to talk about that. Um, some other differences are um, the loom, of course. Uh, the loom on these guys has a two colors, I think it's a blue and a green, just to distinguish between the hands, the 2500s, I think they're all just light green. And I'll show you an example of that in, in a minute here. Uh, the AR coating on the 8900 here, it has a double AR coating on the inside and outside. So at certain angles, like this one here, you can't even see the the, um, the crystal pretty really, so it is it is a really nice thing. Um, the old ones here, these ones have a single AR coating on the outside. So again, it's pretty clear, but I guess um, I'm not sure if you could really tell the difference between a double coating and a single coating on the outside. Um, but it's just something to know if you're choosing between the two. Okay, and I'll show you some loom shots. 
So here's the difference in the loom. On the left here, this is the Pilot Ocean 2500. On the right here, that's the Pilot Ocean 8900. As you can see, like I said before, the 8900 has two different colors of loom for the hands to distinguish them. The 2500 has a single color, and that's pretty much the difference here. Um, I guess it comes down to personal preference, which loom you like better. But both looms are extremely strong. Uh, they'll last easily the night if you're if you have the watch by your nights on your nightstand and you, you need to tell the time in the middle of the night. Um, but for me, um, I kind of prefer the blue one here. I just think it's it pops a little better. But again, I think the green one here you can see it a lot better. Uh, but those are the differences. So that there uh, concludes the comparison between the two. Of course, um, these watches are 10 years apart in terms of uh, their release dates, so you can see what's different between the two models and what Omega's been working on. Um, for me, I like both of them equally the same. This one here, it's more of a, a modern watch. It definitely is more flashy because it's ceramic, but then you have the 2500, which is a more classic watch, and for most people, it will probably fit better because of the the, the thinner case diameter, but this one here is, I would say, it's a more timeless piece. It goes well with, um, I guess, more articles of clothing and more places that you may bring it to. This one here, death because of the thickness and bulkness of the, the bracelet and everything, this is more of a sporty one. Um, getting this under a cuff will be a lot, a little tougher than this one, of course. Um, but again, like the Planet Ocean, is, it, it is a sporty watch, especially with the release of the Omega 300. Uh, that one's going more towards a classic, um, just a classic, more versatile look, rather than the Planet Ocean's going towards a more sporty look. Well, I hope you enjoyed that comparison, and if there's any questions, just leave them in the comments, and thank you for watching.